What you are looking at is my 2D drawing and solid model of the object in paper space. The first thing to do is to erase both the large and small viewports. You can see that the drawings disappear from paper space. All that remains are two rectangles which I do pr drew previously to serve as templates for when I redraw the viewports later on. To get into model space, I'll click the model button. Please notice that both drawings still exist in model space even though they were erased in paper space. Now I'll erase all drawings from model space so that there will be room to redraw both the 2D and solids. Now that the screen is empty, I'll proceed and draw, make the 2D drawing. With ortho on, I'll pick any point on the screen and move to the left and type 2.875 enter. I'll move the mouse up, type 0.559 enter. To the right, type 0.188 enter. Down. 0.121 now 0 0.141 0.121 1.703 Six five point five five six point zero six five point one zero four point zero six five Point one eight three and type C enter to close. Now with the fillet command and with the radius of point zero three one, I'm going to add a a fillet in this corner here. With the chamfer command, I want to put in three chamfers. So I set the first distance at 0 0.062 and the second distance at 0 0.062 and selected those two lines. And now I'll select these two lines and the last two. This is going to be an outside view of the shaft, so I really have to draw a bunch of vertical lines. There's a lot of ways to do it but in the interest of saving time, I'll use the easiest method. All I'm doing is extending to the center line all these vertical lines. Also, I'm going to extend, or I'm going to add a line from a point, no, I'm going to add a line from an intersection to a point that's perpendicular to that axis line there, like so. One more time. Repeat the command and draw a line from this intersection to a point that's perpendicular to this line. In my next step, I'm going to use the mirror command with a crossing window. And mirror from one end of the baseline to the other without deleting it. In addition, I lengthened the center line. It does not show as a center line, so now I'm going to put it on a layer 
on which I have center lines. The 2D drawing is complete except for the dimensions and I suspect the dimensions are going to be quite lengthy so I may not show how I dimension it simply because we are under a lot of pressure in making the video we only have a 10 minute span here well I just finished dimensioning the object on a layer uh, called dimension and you can see it's quite extensive so perhaps a good thing I turned off the video it's ironic but now I went through all the trouble of dimensioning the object now I'm going to have to freeze the dimension layer so I can get on with designing the solid having frozen the layer uh, the dimension layer I made a new layer called solid with the color red and then using a polyline I'm going to trace over a portion of the object. I'm going to pick a point there, there, just trace the perimeter. Type A for arc and go back to L for line. C to close. Now I'm going to move the inclined uh, the polyline to a point above. And now, because I have the uh, a continuous polyline, I'll be able to revolve this object. Typed REV, select the object, select one endpoint, and move it to the other endpoint. Enter the object is revolved. Also this would be a good time to thaw the dimension layer and also to add a little color using the conceptual visual style and then zoom to see the whole drawing. Having finished the 2D solid model and dimensioning, I want to get back to paper space to view the drawing properly and make it ready for printing, so I'll click the Layout 1 button. As you can see, my template rectangles are still there. Now to create the two viewports, I'll type M view and select two diagonal intersections to create the larger and smaller viewports. I'll double click inside the smaller viewport and switch to Southeast Isometric View, then pan and zoom to enlarge the model. To get back to paper space, you double click outside the small viewport. You must remember that when using paper space, the entire drawing should be printed at a scale of 1 1, even though individual viewports can be set to different scales. You set the scale of the large viewport by clicking on the properties button, and then the standard scale is found. Under miscellaneous, that is where you set a scale for the viewport. Once the scale is set, double click inside the large viewport to gain access. Now pan so only the 2D drawing is visible. To accomplish this, it's sometimes necessary to move the solid. Uh, then you double click outside the large viewport to get back into paper space. Finally, if we don't want to, uh, if we don't want to the large and small rectangles to be printed, we can go to the layer dialog box and freeze the layer viewports where the viewports are located. That's optional. The drawing is now complete. If you enjoyed following these instructions and want more videos, you can search YouTube under MD Guide. Also, please comment on this video as I enjoy hearing from you. Thank you for watching.